What is going on? In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about my first impressions of this Artisan Crafted Walk. Hey guys, this is Jason. If you're new to this channel, my wife Angie and I love to share our passion for food, cooking, and also tidbits of our life. So if you're into that and you wanna be updated on when we post new videos, be sure to subscribe. Also, if you wanna support the channel, the best way to do that is by hitting the like button down below because that helps with the YouTube algorithm. Now with that out of the way, the star of this video is this hand hammered walk. Shout out to Masterstar for sending me this amazing walk. They specialize in handmade walks as well as other Asian cooking tools. More on them later, but I will link this exact walk in the description down below. This is not your average walk that you can get from your local Asian market. Kind of like this one that I have. It is a lot cheaper. The metal is very thin. I'm not sure if you can see this and the handle is a little bit loose. They're affordable, they're mass reduced. It will get the job done, but it's not a high-end product. If I were to relate it to cars, it's kind of like a Toyota. It's reliable, it'll get you to where you need to go, and they work. My family loves Toyotas. We have a bunch of Toyotas. But if you're looking for something more luxurious, you might go for something like a Mercedes. But if you want something even more high-end than that, you might go with something like a Rolls Royce. This wok, in my opinion, is like the Rolls Royce of woks. This wok is made of wrought iron, which is iron that has been hand-forged, hand hammered just like the first Iron Man suit. Basically the iron is heated up and then hammered thousands of times, polished until it becomes extremely smooth, extremely slick. There's a lot of walks out there that claim that they're hand hammered, but that's probably not the case. The iron of this walk also came blued and seasoned. I go into detail on how to blue and season a walk in my how to season a walk tutorial. So if you're interested in that, I'll link that down below as well. The reason why you wanna have the steel or iron blued before seasoning is because one, it'll give an extra layer of resistance against rust. Two, it'll allow the oil to bond to the walk more easily, creating a better seasoning. And three, simply, it just looks badass. The amount of skill that is required to make a walk like this, I know that the person who made it has spent a good amount of time refining their skills, basically hammering a lot of walks. That being said, these are my first impressions. The first thing I noticed is what a beauty this walk is. Depending on the lighting, the blue really pops. These are some of the other walks I've seasoned and there is a blue tint to them, but it is a lot darker and sometimes, depending on the type of oil I use, it turns more black, sometimes brown. Over time with use, the walk will probably darken. Even if it does darken, you'll always have those hammer marks that just look so good. And I know some people might think this is just a walk, you're just cooking food in it. It doesn't really matter what it looks like. I would argue it does make a difference, just like how using a regular knife pales in comparison to using a high quality Japanese steel Damascus knife. There's just no comparison. Cooking with this wok does feel more special, partly because of the way it looks. The second thing I noticed is how much heavier this wok is compared to my other woks. These two are carbon steel woks, whereas this one, as I mentioned earlier, is wrought iron. It's not as heavy as cast iron woks, but there is a noticeable difference. In terms of the thickness, this is about two millimeters thick, whereas these other woks are maybe one to one and a half millimeters thick so it's not that big a difference in terms of thickness because the wok has been hammered so many times the metal is very very dense so when I use a wok chan or a wok shovel to scoop food it doesn't leave any scratches in the metal whereas for this one there's a bunch of dents and a bunch of scratches and when I pick it up I showed earlier I can kind of bend it it's flimsy metal this one it just feels tough. It feels like this could be in a Ford advertisement for built tough. The third thing I noticed is a handle. This wok was forged into one single piece so the handle and the wok are you know, the same piece. <laughs> Comparing with this wok, 
This one has rivets to attach a handle to the wok. When it comes to rivets, I personally don't like them because grease tends to build up around them and it makes it a little bit harder to clean the wok. This handle was welded on, which is an improvement compared to the rivets in my opinion, but this one is metal and it tends to get pretty hot if I've been cooking for a long time. So I'll have to use a towel to wrap it so I don't burn my hands. This wok has a silicone sleeve which is great because it protects my hand. It doesn't get hot, it doesn't budge, it doesn't slip or slide. When I pick it up, it feels pretty good. And the last thing that I noticed that probably makes the biggest difference when cooking is the shape of the wok. Now I'm not talking about how circular it is, although this one is a lot more circular. So when I put on a lid, it actually fits perfectly. Whereas this other wok that I use, the lid doesn't fit properly and it wobbles a lot. So it's not very circular. The shape that I'm talking about is the concavity of the wok. Because we use a regular gas burning range and we don't have a commercial wok range, the way the heat is transferred to the wok is very important. One thing I've encountered in the past is that on high heat, the well of the wok actually takes a long time to heat up, mostly because the heat actually travels up the sides. So if the well of the wok is a little bit wider and a little bit flatter, it'll be a little bit easier for the wok to conduct heat. Now I have worked around this by taking off the burner cap of the stove so that the heat is a little bit more concentrated but either way having a flatter wider well of the wok will actually conduct the heat a little bit better now to test the capabilities of this season wok we're going to do an egg test to prepare the wok i'll first wash off any factory oil that was applied to prevent rust during storage and shipping i'll simply wash it with some water and dish soap using a soft sponge Next, I'm going to boil some water in the wok. This will help remove any oil that didn't come off in the washing process. Once the water has been boiling for about a minute or two, I'll pour out the water and dry it off on the stove. On medium heat, once the wok is hot, I'll swirl in a bit of oil. Make sure the oil coats the wok well. Now I'm ready for my egg. Well, we have truth. With the second side, there was a bit of egg residue since I didn't release it with a wok shovel, but these bits came off pretty easily. The factory seasoning is quite good. I expect that if I season this with some onions or continue cooking with it normally, that the seasoning will continue to improve. But for a pre-season wok, I gotta say I'm pretty impressed. If I were to season it myself, it'd probably take me two days and my house will smell like oil. I'm using a paper towel to wipe out some of the egg bits and it looks like nothing was even cooked in it. Now the question is, do I recommend this wok? The short answer is absolutely. If you're someone who cares about craftsmanship, quality, and durability, I say this wok is top notch. Now, if you're brand new to cooking with woks and you just wanna get started, I recommend using a flat bottom wok just because it works with any type of stove and it's an easier transition. But if you're looking for a round bottom wok, I'd say this is one of the best woks that money can buy. As I mentioned earlier, this wok was sent to me by Masterstar, but everything in this video is my own honest opinion. They have a variety of woks, all at very affordable prices. Masterstar ships direct, so it's a good bang for your buck option. This wok in particular, at the time of filming this video, is about $100. $120, which in my opinion is a steal. I was actually eyeing a wok similar to this build quality, but the price was double what Masterstar was selling it for. So it was a pretty hard sell for my wife, <laughs> uh, but I'm glad I have this one now. If you're interested in buying a wok, I would suggest checking out Masterstar for what they have to offer. I don't get paid for it if you buy something from them, but I just think they make great woks. As I mentioned earlier, I'll link this exact wok in the description down below and also their store so that you can see what they have to offer and check them out. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to tap the like button down below and I'll see you in the next video. It's like Thor's hammer. It's so heavy, you have to be worthy to pick it up.